this PowerPoint presentation, we'll talk about definition essays and walk you through each step of how to put together a definition essay. So first, what is it? A definition essay explains what a term means. It sets the boundaries of a thing, a concept, emotion, or value. It answers what is it as well as what is it not, and it specifies the main qualities and its essential nature. There are some different kinds of definitions. There are formal definitions, stipulative definitions, and extended definitions. With a formal definition, you usually give the standard dictionary meaning or the specialized meaning agreed to by a group. So that's more often a workplace kind of thing. If you take a word and decide for our purposes, when we say hot at Wendy's, well, hot means hot as in temperature, and it can even measure attractiveness. But when I was a teenager and I worked at Wendy's, if we said hot, it meant, hey, I'm standing right behind you. Don't turn around and hit me. It can also be a statement of general class followed by the distinction between it and other members of the class. So some examples of formal definition. The term is submarine. The class is a seagoing vessel. And the distinction is that it operates underwater. There's also the term insanity, which is a mental condition. That's its classification. But the distinction between that and all the other terms in that class are that a defendant does not know right from wrong. You want to use formal definition when it is most useful to explain the basic or most commonly used meaning of a term in order for the reader to understand the rest of the discussion. A formal definition should only be used as a starting point, which is why we use the dictionary definition for the first part of our essay. We want to establish, here's what this word means, but then we go on to talk about the other things that it means. A stipulative definition. So I'm sure you've all heard what of stipulations. There are little rules and things that mean if you don't do this, the stipulation, you can't do that. With a definition, it clarifies the particular way that you are using a word. So if you want to argue that pride can ruin a relationship, you must first stipulate a meaning of pride that ties it with that purpose. If you want to argue that love is all you need, you might stipulate a particular kind of love that you are discussing. Because love can mean a lot of different things. You have different kinds of love for different people. You love your spouse or partner in a completely different way than you might love your children, or your dog, or your grandparents, or your friends. But then there's also, you love people, but you could say, I love pizza. And you don't love pizza anywhere near like you love people, or at least hopefully you don't. But it's still a strong, it, it's being used to signify a strong emotion. You can say you love reading, you love watching football. Any of those things all mean love, but to talk about all you need is love, you're going to clarify that who, whose love do you need? You might say all you need is the love of, and it might be like a good woman. I think we've all heard that, the love of a good woman. So if you're saying that's the kind of love you need, well, that makes a lot of sense, and you can clarify that and expand on it. It'd be a little more confusing if, if a person associated love primarily with, I love to watch football, and you're saying all I need is love. Well, they're thinking all you need is love. Well, how does football love you back? That's not a two-way street kind of love. That's me having a fondness for something. So while that's an extreme example, there are millions and millions of words you can choose from. So just think about that as you go into it. It's best to use a stipulative definition when the word's got a lot of meanings and it's very broadly defined and used. And also when you want to use the term in a very specific way. So if you're trying to take something very broad like love and narrow it, you have to put the stipulations in there and explain, yes, love means all of these different things, but 
this is the way that I am specifically using it. And this is what I mean when I say look. So once you get to that, we are doing the extended definition. So here we are going to explore a thing, a quality or idea in its full complexity. We are going to take our word and draw boundaries around it until its meaning is complete and precise. And besides defining your purpose, it may be used to persuade readers to accept a definition, to explain, or to amuse. You can be funny, but don't go overboard with it because it either works really, really well or it really, really doesn't. So you'll use the extended definition when the subject is very complex, or it's very vague, or it's laden with emotions or values, or if it's misunderstood or arguable. The question is though, how do we do it? First, you want to choose a topic. You want to pick words that have complex meanings, words that are open to varied interpretations, words that may be unfamiliar to readers, and words that should be something that you know and care enough about to explore in great detail and surround completely. You'll want to examine and list some conventional meanings. You'll want to look at the dictionary. There's something called an unabridged dictionary. If you're using all online sources, you'll want to Google an unabridged dictionary. Unabridged dictionaries give you every single meaning ever about a word. Whereas an abridged dictionary just gives you more of the commonly held definitions. Next, you'll want to examine differences of opinion regarding the word. The different ways, wrong or right, that you have seen or heard it used. So, as I mentioned before, hot is temperature. But we can say, oh, he's hot, she's hot. And as I said, too, you can take co-op that and make it a completely different thing. You keep in mind, words are all just things that we all have agreed on as a meaning. So if we suddenly decide that we're going to call the clock a computer and the computer a bed, well, if we all do that, then that's the new word for it. It doesn't change the meaning, it just simply changes the word. So words can have multiple meanings, words can change over time. Very important to keep that in mind. And people can differ about that. Ask people what they think words mean. So some strategies to consider. How can the subject be described? What are some examples? Can the subject be divided into qualities or characteristics? Can its functions help define it? Will comparing and contrasting it with something else help sharpen its meaning? Do its causes or effects help clarify its sense? And here are some other defining strategies. Synonyms can help convey the range of the word's meanings. Negation can convey what the word does not mean and how this limits the meaning or focus. You can also look at the etymology, which conveys its varied or original meanings. You can use these strategies separately or in combination to create the outcome that you're looking for. There's no set strategy for this. Next, you'll want to select your purpose. Are you explaining an unfamiliar word? Are you expressing your own views so that readers see a familiar subject from a new angle? Are you arguing in favor of a particular definition? So do you feel like the only time hot should ever be used is in relationship to describing someone's attractiveness and that we should stop using it to discuss temperature? Or are you persuading readers to look more closely at themselves or their surroundings? Next, you'll want to formulate a thesis. Your thesis should include the word you're defining, the direction of your essay. So here's an example of a thesis. The term monster does not refer to an individual of hideous appearance, but rather the term monster refers to one who partakes in immoral acts or decisions, which is something all individuals do. So this writer has explained that this is the term they're going to use. This is a common meaning, but here's the direction they're going to take it in. 
and that monster isn't necessarily a made up boogeyman or a really ugly person. It's someone who is horrible on the inside. Thank you.